So what's new for After Effects 2024? Is it that big game-changing update that we've all been dreaming of? Well, AI was the name of the game, and if you caught the keynote and got a dollar for every single time they mentioned Firefly, you'd be rich right now. Firefly, 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 Firefly. Generative fill updates for Photoshop, text to vector for Illustrator, Firefly, Firefly. Image 2 model, but what about everyone's low-key favorite app, After Effects? Well, we got Rotobrush 3, baby! And some other little things like scripting hooks for text and font manipulation, and some new color management tools, which look like they'll echo some of the new color management tools coming to Premiere Pro. So, not really that much. But hey, Rotobrush 3! Anyway, I'm Tom Graham for Envato Tuts Plus. I've been using After Effects for like 15 years at this point, so let's jump in and we'll see if it actually works and if it's worth the wait. Now, rotoscoping is either the bane of your existence or a nice calming task that you do with a podcast on in the background, but whatever your experience, I think we can all agree that it is a somewhat tedious process. I've got this clip here from Envato Elements, and this is kind of a typical use case for me when I'm rotoscoping. I'm generally looking to separate my subject from the background, and then I want to layer other elements like text in between. Now, straight up, this clip isn't going to be the hardest thing in the world to rotoscope, even for the previous version of the Roto Brush, but we're looking at the speed and the accuracy that's come with this new update. The updated Roto Brush functions pretty much in exactly the same way as the previous version, in that you paint in the parts of the image that you want to roto, and then you hold the option key to paint out the parts that you don't want it to look at. You then have the ability to select which version of the brush you want in the effects controls panel and tweak some other settings. And in After Effects version 24, we now have access to version 3.0 of the Roto Brush. So I've made my selection and generally at this point, I'd go frame by frame and I make sure that the brush is grabbing everything that we need and nothing that we don't before I go ahead and freeze it. But let's put it through its paces. I'm going to just hit freeze on this first frame and let it do its thing. It's supposed to be faster, so we'll see how long it takes and then compare it to the previous version. And you can see here, it's done a pretty good job. There's definitely a few imperfections, but without any actual tweaks to the effect, I think we're in a pretty good spot. For reference, that was about 2 minutes 45 seconds to render, and I'll caveat by saying I am actually running a bunch of other things on my machine right now, so your time might vary. To really put it through its paces though, we need to compare it to the previous version and see how it stacks up. So I've gone through and I've duplicated this composition, I've done exactly the same path for the Roto Brush, but I've selected version 2 of the brush and set it to best quality. And again, it's pretty quick. It took about 25 seconds longer than the new version, clocking in at 3 minutes and 10 seconds. So technically the new brush is faster, but is it better? And you know what? I'm a little disappointed that this is the big update for After Effects because to my eye, it really hasn't done that much better of a job. You can see here where we zoom in on the composition and focus on where his arm intersects with the text in the background that we're getting quite a bit of chatter. And I'd say more so on the version 3 of the brush, to be honest. My assumption would be that this would be very clean, especially on a piece of footage like this. It's not a hard piece of footage to roto. Sure, we can go through and we can tweak some settings up here in the effects, and we'll do that briefly in a moment and we can show the results. But out of the box, in a head-to-head -head challenge, other than being marginally quicker, I'm not seeing remarkably different results from this version 3 of the brush. Skipping forward in time though, I've gone through and I've tweaked the settings to my liking on both V3 and V2 of the brush, we're seeing pretty similar results. I will say though that I got this result much quicker on the version 3 than I did on version 2, tweaking those settings, but again, not remarkably so. You know what though? Progress is progress, and for us working in After Effects will pretty much take any update at this point. You can download the new version of After Effects right now and play around with it for yourself and see how you go. If you do want to check out my wrap-up of all of the new features for Premiere Pro in 2024, then check out the link in the video details below, or better yet, head over to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel and peep our coverage of Adobe Max for the roundup of the rest of the Creative Cloud apps, especially the ones that got the actual big updates. Now, if you're in After Effects day in and day out, then head over to Envato Elements and check out the largest unlimited video template library in the world. Fast track your creative ideas and deliver your best work with studio quality motion graphic templates for every editing program, including After Effects and authentic B-roll. Follow the link in the description below and sign up today. So that's it. That's the big update from After Effects 24 for Adobe Max 2023. Let me know down in the comments what else you thought might be coming to After Effects and what you're still holding out hope for in the future. Maybe one day we'll get that full rebuild that we're all dreaming of. Until next time, happy animating.